Good afternoon, educators. As with every Don Bosco Press event, we start with a prayer. Let us put ourselves in the presence of our Lord. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon, educators. Isang mapagpalayang hapon sa ating lahat. Happy Independence Day to all. Um, welcome to Don Bosco Press Chalk Talk Online. So, Luciana Books Chalk Talk Online. Chalk Talk is a teacher training program that Don Bosco Press provides its partner schools. And despite this pandemic, we continue to move forward and make the most out of this challenging situation. That's why we are now bringing to you Chalk Talk and making it online. So that's, that's why we now call it Chalk Talk Online. This Chalk Talk Online's second session on Google for Education um, is being brought to you to be able to help um, teachers know how to navigate um, this new normal. The topic for today is set up set up of an educator teaching online so this afternoon we will know what what are the software and hardware requirements and other equipment needed to facilitate an online class so this is going to be a productive and informative afternoon so let us not delay any further may i now call the executive director of don bosco press incorporated to formally welcome you all Brother Carmelo Martinez, Seditions of Don Bosco. Good 
welcome to our second session of the G Suite for Education series. Uh, we hope that you have benefited from our first session of this series held last May 29, if I'm not mistaken. We hope also that you have already received your certificates for the first session. Maybe by just a simple poll, may we know who were who among you here are attendees of the first session. Okay, results are coming in. Yeah, a good number. Um, a good number of our participants now are were also present during the first session held last May 29. Okay, around 68% of the attendees now have been present in the in the first series, in the first session of this series. We at Don Bosco Press, through our Salishana Books brand, take seriously our motto of quality education through quality textbooks. But we also believe that the effectivity of these learning resources that we offer greatly depends on the quality of teachers who will facilitate and use them. And so we do our best in assisting educators qualify and pre prepare themselves, especially in this time of great challenge brought about by this pandemic. We are happy that we have partnered with a very competent and committed Google trainer and innovator and himself a licensed teacher, Mr. Gary Garcia. We do hope that this afternoon's Chalk Talk Online will be as enriching and enjoyable as the first, if not even better. We thank you for the support and trust that you are giving Salishana Books, and we are grateful that you have partnered with us too. We look forward to your participation not only in this G Suite for Education series, but also in our other Chalk Talk Online series. Again, just a simple poll. May I just know just who among us here are already coming from Salishana Books partner schools. So the choices are only either yes or not yet. So if you are not yet a partner school of Salishana, so we hope that in the future, you'll get to use our learning resources. Okay. okay, thank you. Majority of our participants are, are, are coming from Salishana Books Partner Schools. As I was saying, as I welcome all of you to this Chalk Talk Online series on G Suite for Education, we also invite you to the other Chalk Talk Online series that we have currently we have this partnership with the University of the Philippines Open University with the UPOU Remote Teaching and Learning Series. It is scheduled every other Wednesday. We'll have the third session next week, June 17. Also ongoing is the Christ Evangelization and Faith Series for Religion Teachers and Youth Ministers every other Friday, alternately with this Google for Education Series. The Chef Series will have its second session next week, June 19. And soon, we hope to start a special Chalk Talk online series that focuses on mental health and psychosocial intervention for the whole school community. Watch out for these Chalk Talk online series and for regular updates from Don Bosco Press Incorporated, please like and follow our Facebook page or inquire from the Salishana Books account executive assigned in your school. 
Please let us know how else we can be of assistance to you and to your school community. Let us work together in facing the challenges that lie ahead. Once again, welcome to the second installment of the Google for Education series. And thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Isang maligaya, makahulugan, at mapayapang araw ng kalayaan sa ating lahat. Pagpalain po tayo ng poong may kapal. I am back because it is also my duty to introduce to you our speaker, our trainer for this afternoon. We are honored to have with us for this session, once again, Mr. John Gary Garcia. Mr. Garcia is a professional educator with diverse experience and strong track record for, of fostering student-centered curriculum and collaborative learning. He has been a teacher for 20 years now, having taught at San Pedro Poveda College in Ortigas, at the Holy Spirit Academy of Malolos, and at the Bulacan State University, to name a few. He has handled various groups of learners from grade school to college students to professionals. He has also coached teachers in integrating technology in the classroom and has participated as trainer, resource speaker in various educational technology summits and conferences here and abroad. Mr. Garcia completed his bachelor's degree in business administration, major in computer management from the National College of Business and Arts. He took his teacher certification program at De La Salle University, Manila, and earned units for his master of science degree in information technology from the La Consolacion University of the Philippines. Mr. Garcia, or Sir Gary, is a Google for Education certified trainer and innovator. He is likewise a certified Google for Education innovator program coach, Southeast Asia 2019 cohort. In this connection, Sir Gary is also a Google certified educator group leader and a Microsoft Office user specialist and an Apple authorized training center consultant. Having heard this creden his credentials, I strongly believe that we are all in good hands this afternoon. Friends, let us warmly welcome Mr. John Gary Garcia. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Gary Garcia, a Google innovator and in trainer, and I'm here to talk about uh, setup on, of an educator online. Um, may I have the slide, please? And so, <clears throat> everyone is forced to teach online. So uh, this very essential thing that we have to talk about this afternoon is what will be your setup as an educator, okay? So for, uh, for this afternoon, we will be talking about the following, the equipments that you need to have and the things that we have to consider uh, at home and in a lot of aspects and I'll be giving some tips for teachers when we conduct distance learning or distance education. Okay, so let me start with a poll. Okay, so may I ask uh, for the equipments. Let me start with the poll. Okay, what equipments do you have at home? <clears throat> so you may have more than one answer. You may have desktop or laptop, you know? So this is important to know so we can see if we have enough, okay? So there's a lot. A lot is demanded for teachers. So let's check if we have enough, okay? So, hmm. so go ahead and then submit your answer. And then, okay, let's give some... 10 seconds for everyone to answer the, the poll. And then let's see the result of the poll. Okay. So 
why did I ask this? You know? Because the first thing that we will talk about is the equipments that we need to have at home. What is expected from us as teachers? What do we need to have? So we'll be able to teach online, okay? So can we have now the result of the poll? Okay. May I have now the result of the poll? Okay, so maybe we'll we'll show the the result of the poll later. So why did they ask this? So what what about equipment? Why do we need? Why, why what are the equipments that we need to have? Okay, so basically, what you need to have to conduct an online classroom or on distance learning or distance education is that you need to have your own laptop or desktop. When I say need to have your own, is because we all know that there are teachers who are also parents. And they may ha you may have kids, so you need to have your own. You cannot share this with your with your uh, with your kids, because it's very magiging challenging the mechanics natin sa bahay, ano? Because, of course, we have our classes, our students, our anak natin. At the same time, tayo guro, so maghati hati ba tayo sa resources? What if we cannot really budget? Because we have mga may mga setup na meron tatlong anak. Tapos merong dalawang computer, pero nag-work din si mami kasi teacher o si daddy teacher. So, ilan kayo maghahati ngayon? Apat, ano? So, we need, that's, that's why I have that poll. So, aside from laptop or desktop, we need to have a reliable internet connection. Um, kasi po, uh, teaching online will not be possible if you don't have internet connection. And then, we need to have at least an earphone. Uh, a headset is not really recommended kasi kapag matagal na po tayo na, na naka-earphone, medyo mainit na po, magiging uncomfortable po tayo. So these are some of the basic, okay, or the essential uh, equipments that we need to have, okay? So may we have now the result of the poll? Tignan nga natin kung sino yung may mga gamit sa bahay. Tignan natin yung resulta. Kasi some, some laptops are being shared with the family. So... Magiging, baka maging challenge yan, ano? So we have to consider the number of uh, students that we have at home at the same time, yung mga nag working from home. So we need to know these things. Okay, so later na lang siguro din si Paul. So aside from these equipments, we need to have some extra equipment. So these are just the basic, ano? the laptop, the internet, and an earphone. But aside from that, Para makapagturo po yung mga math teachers, science teachers, or kahit po anong subject, kailangan din po mas maganda, mas magiging convenient para sa atin yung meron po tayong sarili nating whiteboard and whiteboard marker. Kasi po, ito na po yung mga, ito na po yung mga equivalent ng whiteboard natin sa classroom, okay? Okay, so... Para po mas madali tayong magturo, makakapagsulat po tayo ng maigi, mas maganda po kung meron tayong sariling whiteboard. Okay? Whiteboard and whiteboard marker. So para po hindi na tayo gagamit ng digital na whiteboard kasi mas magiging challenging po if we will be using white, uh, digital whiteboard and whiteboard marker. Meron naman po nun, pero unti-unti po para hindi po tayo ma mabigla. Ano? Okay. So, aside from that, we need to have an external camera. Okay? Bakit po external camera? Kasi po, hindi po natin pwedeng, hindi po pwedeng ginagawa ko ngayon na magsusulat ako tapos pinapakita ko sa inyo, no? Well, pwede naman kung gusto nyo pong tiyagain, ano? Pero, mas magiging convenient po para sa ating mga guro if we will make use of uh, a, an external camera. So, what will happen is, if we have an external camera, let me share my extended screen po, ano? Um, let me share uh, my external camera. Meron po kasi akong external camera. So, ang mangyayari po ngayon, magiging madali po sa atin kasi 
meron tayong nagparang normal setup lang natin. Ngayon po, ang nakikita nyo ay yung aking whiteboard at aking whiteboard marker. So, set up. Ayan. Off. And educator. So, mas magiging challenging po ito kasi sa mga teachers na math and science. For example, let's say x squared plus y squared is equal to, ganyan, let's say 8. So, mas madali po kasi mas natural sa atin na magsulat sa blackboard or whiteboard. So, kung meron po tayong whiteboard na uh, small size lang po, mas magiging convenient po yan. Ano? Kasi po, kapag hindi, gagamit tayo ng digital equivalent yan. Alam po natin, marami pa tayong dapat matutunan. Kaya po, mas mahirap kung gagamit po tayo ng digital equivalent ng whiteboard. Okay? So, mas maganda po kung meron tayong uh, external camera. So, let me have, can I have my slides? Okay. Okay, my apologies, my internet it went down po, no? So let's continue. So aside from the whiteboard and whiteboard marker, we need to have external camera, we need to have a camera holder, hopefully you have a tripod para po mas convenient, no? So another extra na naman po ito para sa ating mga, mga teachers, no? So... Bukod po dito sa mga to para mas maging conveniente yung pagtuturo po natin, we need to have some VGA or HDMI cable. Depende po yan kung ano equipment po meron kayo. Or VGA at VGA and HDMI adapter para po sa inyong secondary monitor. Okay? So your secondary monitor can be a computer monitor or your TV screen. Okay po? With VGA, or HDMI connection, kaya doon po natin gagamitin yung ating mga cable and adapter, no? So, itong pinapakita ko po sa inyong ito, gusto ko pong ipakita sa inyo yung ideal setup. Pero kung wala po tayong extent, uh, secondary monitor or uh, other ex uh, external camera, pwede naman po. Mas challenging lang po kung wala, okay? So, let me show you my setup. Okay? So, let me share my screen. Yung screen ko pong isi-share ngayon, this will be, this is my secondary camera. Okay? So, meron po ako ngayon dito. Na, so, nakikita niyo po yung yung aking pong laptop. Okay? So, dito po, dito po sa screen na to, nandito po yung slide ko o yung aking uh, pinipresent sa mga estudyante. Okay? Nakakonect po yan sa isang adapter papunta po doon sa TV o sa secondary monitor ko, na nandun naman po sa TV, doon ko po i-display yung aking mga estudyante so I can monitor them better. Okay? Because uh, just like in any classroom, we need to manage our students. So we need to see our slide presentation, yung kung saan tayo tuturo, at we need to see our students doon sa secondary monitor. Yan po yung use ng secondary monitor. Kung wala naman po tayong secondary monitor, ang mangyayari lang naman po dyan, kung wala tayong secondary monitor, wala din po tayong mga cable, pwede naman po lang lahat yan nasa isang window. Okay po, nakikita nyo po ngayon yung aking window, no? So wala po tayong TV na yun, nasa screen lang. So meron pong isang uh, screen to monitor your student at another screen to monitor or to, to see your presentation. Okay? So, magtatagal po kayo, mag-switch po kayo doon sa window. Kailangan po marunong kayo ngayon magtagal between windows kung kayo po ay walang extended monitor. So, challenging po din yan kasi dapat po alam niyo yung shortcut kung paano kayo mag-switch between windows. Okay? So, kaya nga po mas maganda kung meron po tayong extended monitor para nakikita nyo doon sa bandang taas. Ano? Doon po, no? dito nyo nakikita yung extended monitor, yung mga estudyante nyo nandyan. At sa monitor nyo, makikita nyo naman po sa monitor ng inyong laptop or desktop, yung inyong pong 
uh, presentation. So, ganyan po yung uh, ideal setup. At kung wala nga po, pagsasamahin nyo lang siya sa isang window para makapagturo po kayo ng maayos. Okay? So, let me stop sharing the screen. Okay? So, I'll have my uh, slide deck po ulit. Ano? Okay, so sa slide deck, ayan po ang use ng secondary monitor para maging convenient po sa atin, okay? So, you can also have, tama po yung sabi ni Miss, Miss Ferrer, can this also be done with two tabs open side by side? Pwede naman po. But when you have two tabs open side by side, uh, mas liliit po yung screen natin. So, pwede po yun. Pag lumiit po kasi yung screen natin, what will happen is liliit din po yung viewing natin, baka hindi natin mabasa, mas maging challenging para sa atin. Ano? So, pwede po yun, Ms. Ferrer, tama po yung suggestion niya. No? Uh, it, can, it is possible to have multiple tabs or multiple windows. So, medyo yun po yung mga papractice natin, how to switch between tabs or between windows. Okay? So, aside from this, so we're done with so we need to have, the ideal setup again is you need to have basic, you need to have your laptop or desktop, a reliable internet connection, and then earphones or uh, 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 like this one, it's uh, a microphone po, a USB mic. Okay? Tapos po yung audio, narinig ko na po sa TV. Ganun po yung ginagawa ko ngayon. And then we have whiteboard para mas natural po yung pagsusulat natin kumpara po sa paggamit ng electronic whiteboard para po mas madali para sa atin, no? And then external camera para po maipapakita natin yung ginagawa natin. Halimbawa po, magde-demonstrate kayo ng origami. So, you need to make use of of an external camera. Hindi po yung igaganon natin sa harapan ng computer, uh, ng camera po ng ating desk, ng laptop po natin. Medyo mahirap po yun kasi nakabaligtad po. Ang nakikita nyo ay hindi yung opposite po ng nakikita ng estudyante natin. So, it's better if you have an external camera. And then, if you have an external camera, you need to have a camera holder. Hopefully, you have a tripod or yung phone camera, yung phone holder na lang po. But make sure that it will not fall. Ayan po, no? So, external camera. And then, if you want to have, siguro po may TV, pwede po natin gamitin yan. Kung wala pa tayong secondary, parang desktop computer monitor, we can make use of our TV. Okay po? Ah, okay. Meron pong, sige po, meron pong question si Ms. Alagon, ano? What is the ideal number of students for online class? Ito lang pong, ano ko yan, the lower the number, the better. Kasi it's hard to engage 40 students. So hopefully, uh, 30 is, sana po, hindi nila lagpas ng 30, ano? Pero depende po yan sa setup ng isang school, meron pong mas marami pa doon. So hopefully, um, yun po, challenge din po yung classroom management. In a little while, we will talk about the classroom management. So ito pa lang po yung uh, equipment na dapat meron tayo na para mas convenient sa atin. Ano? Let's go now to the things that we have to consider. There are several things that we have to consider aside from learning the tools. Ano? So let's have a poll po ulit. Um... Sige nga po, availability of internet connection. Let's have a, another poll. Kasi it matters po, no? It matters kung ano po yung ating internet connection. So, sige nga po, pakicheck po kung ano ang meron tayong internet connection. Kasi po, it will matter. Now, before, I was using a prepaid kasi I'm not, I'm not really using internet uh, all the time. Kasi meron pong internet sa bahay, meron naman pong internet sa school. So, ginagamit ko lang po sa phone ko ay internet. Pero ngayon po, kailangan natin ng internet na lagi kung tayo po ay magtuturo online. Ano? So, kung, kung uh, dati po, gumaga kung hindi po ako nasa bahay, um, gumagamit, gumagasas po ako ng around 150 pesos for two days to conduct uh, kasi po ako ay technology teacher so I, I need to have online connection or I need to have a connection all the time. So the 200 uh, the 150 pesos is for uh, is for is good for two days. So if it's 10 days 
So, 150 times 10 is 1,500 na divided by 2, that's 700, uh, 700, uh, 750. So, kung prepaid po yung gagamitin natin, mukhang uh, mapapagastos po tayo kung kukumpitin nyo siya for 30 days. Kasi the 750 is only good for 10 days. Doon po sa kaso ko na yan, no? Now, you can get a 2,000 or 1,500 uh, line sa bahay, you know? So, mas mukhang malaki po siya. Pero in the long run, kung kukumpitin nyo po yung gagastos niyo kapag prepaid ng mobile connection kayo, mas magastos po ang mobile connection. So, you need to get, I suggest you need to get uh, a line para po mas matipid. Kasi po, kung magtuturo po kayo regularly online, okay? Mas maganda po yung fiber kasi meron na naman po ngayon uh, fiber connection na medyo mababa na po. Okay. Uh, hmm. Let's see the result of the poll. Okay. So, okay. So, hmm. hmm. Okay. Nakikita ko po dito yung uh, result ng poll. Okay, start poll. Okay, let me, the question. Okay, sige, mamaya na po yung poll, ano? <laughs> Hindi ko po makuha yung poll natin dito. Okay, let's have the the next slide, okay? So, bakit ko po tinanong yung, bakit ko po tinanong yung mga question na ito? Kung confident ba tayo? Kung magaling ba tayo sa keyboard shortcut, kasi it will matter na po. When we go online, tayo na po yung magpepresente. Tayo po yung director, tayo po yung host, tayo po yung speaker, tayo po lahat. Okay? Kaya po ang ginagawa ng ibang school, para po may katulong yung teacher, okay? Ang gagawin po nila, sa school po sila papasok, papasok pa rin po physically yung mga teacher sa school, Pero wala po silang estudyante. Kasi po, yung ibang teacher, kasama nila para mag-manage mag ng technical, ng mga pag-screen share, mag-switch mag win between windows. Tapos si teacher naman po, si subject teacher, mag-discuss na lang po siya. At isa na lang po yung focus niya, yung kanyang slide presentation. So, pa para po makatulong sa atin. Ano? So, ngayon magiging, ano po yan, uh, we have to find our ways on how to survive online teaching. So, Pwede pong team teaching ang gawin muna natin sa simula para po may katulong kayo hanggang sa magiging bihas sana po kayo sa pag-switch ng, ng windows, sa pag-click ng mga control, ng buttons. Uh, kasi po nakaka-overwhelm po yan, lalong-lalo na po sa mga tenure teachers natin. Ano? Okay, so let's continue. So what are the things that we have to consider? Meron pong tatlong bagay that we have to consider. Yung ating pong workspace, yung ating pong disposition, and yung ating pong mga estudyante. When I say workspace po, yung ating pong workspace, dapat po free from traffic. When I say free from traffic, dapat po walang dadaan-daan sa likod. That's one. Medyo away from the outside uh, noise. Yung mga pag nasa highway po tayo, maraming tricycle, maraming jeep. Ano, medyo distracting po kahit po sa ating nagtuturo. Kung medyo maingay po yung ating workspace, yung ating pang environment. Kung meron po may mga uh, teacher, tapos meron po batang anak, ano? So, baka po umiyak ulit, baka po umiyak si baby, medyo uh, makaka-distract po sa atin yun, ano? So, we make sure that we are not distracted when we teach. So, we have to consider our workspace. Not just our workspace, but including the lighting. Okay? Bakit po yung lighting importante, eh? Kasi po, katulad ko po ngayon, no? medyo nakikita, siguro po kung nag-aral ko yun, kung meron kayong concept sa photography, dapat po yung top proper lighting medyo uh, ma-observe natin. Kasi po, kapag madilim po yung mukha natin or against the light tayo, for example po, no? I will go this way, magiging against the light po, no? pangit po yung magiging itsura natin. Kasi po, what, how do we look in the camera will make an impression on our students. Okay po. So, sa photography din po, merong framing na tinatawag. Kung na-notice niyo po, wala po ako sa gitna. Okay? Kasi we have to consider our frame. 
kung narinig nyo na, sa mga cellphones po natin, di po ba, pag nagtetake tayo ng picture, merong grid lines. Okay po? Merong grid lines. Yung para pong, uh, um, yung para pong invisible line, dividing the frame, uh, dividing the frame to with nine, nine rectangular shape. Dapat po kasi, yung pag nagtetake tayo ng picture, ang subject po natin, katulad ko ngayon, yung nasa frame ako, yung intersection ng dalawang line, ng, ng vertical and horizontal line, dapat po nandun yung eye. Kung mapapansin niyo po ang mga reporter sa TV, wala po sila sa, wala po sila sa gitna. Okay? Medyo i-move ko lang po yung aking camera. Wala po sila sa gitna ng camera. Okay? Medyo nasa side po yan. Bakit po? Bukod po doon sa merong lumalabas dito sa side nila, para po hindi boring sa mga nanonood. Para po merong konting, uh, may merong, merong, kasi po, unang-unang po, pag nasa gitna tayo, saan po natin nakikita yan? Lahat po tayo may picture na nasa gitna tayo. Iyon po ay ang ating ID picture. Okay? So, now, if we will observe the rules of thirds, dapat po nasa bandang, uh, if we divide, if we put imaginary lines, ano? Dito po, imaginary lines, dapat po nandun tayo sa intersection, yung, yung intersection po nandito sa ating frame. That's another thing to consider para po hindi boring, okay? So, yung mga nagsa-selfie po dyan, alam nyo po yung mga angle, nagagawa ng angle, nagpapapayat, nagpapapataba. So, kaya kailangan tutungo din, ano? Aside from the lighting. And then, acoustic. Yung acoustic po, it matters a lot. Kasi baka po mamaya ma-echo, medyo distracting po sa mga estudyante natin yon. Kahit naman po tayo, pag may echo, uh, medyo pangit pakinggan o hindi maiintindihan yung ating pong sinasabi. Okay? And then, aside from the acoustics, lighting, and free from traffic, dapat po medyo uh, yung ventilation po maayos. Ano? So, Siyempre, magastos po pag lagi tayo naka-aircon sa bahay. So, meron po tayong electric fan. But make sure that the electric fan does not uh, create a background noise. Baka kasi nakatutok po sa atin yung electric fan, medyo mapipick up po yun ng microphone natin o ng ating headset, maingay po yun. And, and the background noise is unnecessary po. So, sana po dapat wala tayong, malayo po tayo dapat sa background noise. Okay? And then, space. Yung ating pong workspace, sana komportable kayo. Meron kayong upuan ng komportable, hindi po tayo dapat nakaslouch sa, sa, sa kama, hindi po tayo dapat nakaslouch kung saan man po tayo nakaupo. So, dapat po komportable. Kasi, syempre, mag, magsusuot, magbibihis pa rin naman po tayo ng maayos. Nakapolo para sa mga lalaki, nakablouse para sa mga babae, ano? yung pangtaas lang naman po. Kasi hanggang doon lang naman din po yung ipapakita natin. Okay? So, these are the things that we have to consider with, with respect to our workspace. Okay? Ah, meron po tanong dito si Ms. Uh, Ms. Hoselina. If you are streaming lesson from the school, can you just use the whiteboard in the classroom? Yes po. But you need to have an external camera para po hindi kayo uh, uh, magta-turn na magta-turn ng inyong uh, laptop. Ano? Baka po masira o mahugot or yung cable po natin. So, you need to have an external camera. Yes, you can do that. Tapos, uh, Sir Edward, sabi po niya, Sir Gary, can we connect an iPad to a MacBook which we can serve as a whiteboard? Yes po, you need to have an adapter. Hi, Sir Edward. Yan. Yeah. Okay. So, let's proceed. Um... So aside from workspace, as I mentioned earlier, we also need to consider our disposition. Okay? Yung ating pong facial expression, that's first. Kasi po, that is what we, that, that's the, uh, that is what our students will see. It will matter now. Okay? Wala po tayong nakitang host sa TV show na nakasimangot. Okay? Because it creates the atmosphere dun sa show. Ngayon po, tayo yung nasa harapan ng camera, Bilang mga guro, dapat po maganda ang ating pong disposition. Yung ating pong tono ng boses, maayos po. Kasi, um, pag boring po tayo magsalita, 
Tapos, ganyan lang po tayo, no? Okay, class. Ano? Hindi po natin may engage yung estudyante. Mag-iiba po yung, baka po mag-off ng camera yung estudyante, mag-off ng microphone, tapos umalis na si student. Hindi po natin alam, hindi pala nakikinig. It will be difficult for us to engage our students if our tone is not so good. So, disposition po natin. Yung facial expression, our tone of voice, and our mood is so important now because we need to be animated or uh, creative, no? Or uh, yung maganda po yung ating disposition sa, yung kalagayan pa yung ating mood. Kasi it will, uh, it will, it will, we will be emitting an energy, even it's in a digital format. So, affected po yan, mararamdaman po yan ng estudyante. Okay? So, ganun din po yung hinihingi natin sa ating mga estudyante. Dapat po, sana naka-on yung camera nila, pero naka-off lang po yung microphone, so we, we don't see, we don't hear so much noise. Um, bakit po natin kailangan makita mga estudyante natin? Kailangan din po makita natin yung mukha nila. So, we can engage them, especially kung nakasimangot. So, we can, oh, kumusta ka na? So, a small talk will do, and you'll be able to get their attention and engage them. So, be interactive. Okay? When we do distance learning. Okay? Aside from this position, we have to consider also our students. So, sinasabi ko nga po kanina, yung classroom management natin may bago na. Okay? So, we, then, we don't let our students to turn off our camera as much as possible. Kasi po, Kapag naka-off yung camera niyan, hindi po natin alam kung nakikinig pa sila. Okay? Now, kung meron po tayong lecture, hindi po pwedeng salita lang tayo ng salita ng salita. Dapat po, we will pause and then we'll make sure that they understand. Paano po yon? So, sa ngayon po, hindi ko po kayo nakikita. So, what I do is, I check on the chat, the chat area, the public chat. So, I will now answer the question. So, oy, nakita, alimbawa, si, si Ms. Jos Jocelina, so, na nabasa niya yung So, at least alam niya, I am connecting with my students. I am in, I am engaging them. So, I'd like to uh, I'd like to ask everyone to post their questions. If you have any questions, please utilize the the public chat. Okay po? So, ayan si Sir Edward din. Meron siyang tanong. So, pwede po yan. So, that's uh, one way of engaging our students. If you're using Google Classroom, there is uh, the chat area. If you're using Google Slide, there is the presenter view wherein you can engage them by posting a question and then you can easily show the question to your viewers or to your students. Now, our students have different learning styles. Meron pong mahilig magbasa, meron pong okay na saan lang makinig lang, manood ng video. So we have to consider all these things when we prepare our materials. Because when we prepare our materials, it should address the learning style of our students. Kung meron kang PDF file na ipapabasa, eh paano yun kung ang, ang mga bata ay hindi masipag? So me, sana meron din tayong video na the same thing ang uh, pinipresenta, no? the same concept. So you can utilize video and then a PDF file. So you, you, they, you, uh, you supply them with different re reading materials or uh, resources. Okay po? And then the very important thing is the length of time that they will spend to study for your subject. Bakit po? Typically, a student, uh, meron po yung mga around 10 subjects, ano? Tapos, halimbawa, uh, sa computer or sa, or sa math, ano? Si teacher, may short lang tong exercise ko na to, no? Or yung assignment ko. Kasi I can finish it in 5 minutes. Tayo po ay teacher. Alam po natin yung lesson natin. Tayo po yung master dun sa subject na yun, no? So, kaya po pwede natin matapos yan 5 minutes or even 3 minutes, ano? Let's say 5 minutes po, tapos na tayo. Ang estudyante po, nag-aaral. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa nila alam. So, we have to give time for the student to finish. Enough time for them to finish. If we can finish it in, for, in 5 minutes, it means we have to give 20 minutes or up to 25 minutes for the student to finish the problem. Okay? So if it's 5 minutes on, 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 para sa teacher para matapos, times multiply it by 4 or multiply it by 5. That is the allotted time that we have to give to our students. Okay? So yan po ay pagsasolve pa lang ng math problem, for example. Meron pa yan, magbabasa pa po yan ng 
instruction. Makikinig pa po yan sa video na isusupply ninyo. Let's say one minute, one minute na lang po. May ipapabasa pa kayo na, na reading material, ano? So, that's eight minutes plus five minutes. Ay, sorry, five minutes plus three minutes. O, bigyan po po natin ng allowance na another five minutes. So, ten minutes po yun. So, magiging 40 minutes na yan or 50 minutes. Let's just say 40 minutes. Iyon pong 40 minutes na yon ay sa subject nyo pa lang. Okay? Ilang subject po ang meron tayo ulit? Ang meron, meron ng isang, meron, ilang subject po meron ng isang estudyante? Around 10 in an average for 8 to 10. Minsan po, 11 or 12 subjects pa. If each subject will give 50 minutes, no? Kasi sabi, 50 minutes lang naman ako. Take note, times 10 mo yun. Di 500 minutes na yun, no? Ilan po ba yung 500 minutes? Sa isang linggo, ganun po ang dapat na oras na i-google ng estudyante sa kanilang pag-aaral. Okay? Take note, medyo challenging po sa bata na mag-aral sa bahay. Bakit po? Nung, nung usual setup natin, nung old setup natin, Kahit tinatamad pa po yan sa umaga, pag sumakay po ng sasakyan niya at pumasok sa school, yung transition po ng pag-alis ng bahay at pagbaba ng sasakyan pag nakarating na po sa school, yun po, may signal na si student, o work, student, student na ako ngayon, aral, aral, aral mo. Pag uuwi po siya sa bahay, sasakay ulit po siya ng sasakyan, ano? Yun po, ang signal na niya, oops, pahinga, pahinga, pahinga. Ngayon po, kung 500 minutes nasa bahay siya mag-aaral at magpapahinga, ang mode po ng psychologically, ang, 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 ang setting po natin sa bahay, pahinga. Ngayon po, challenging sa bata na mag-aaral sa bahay. So, yung atin pong alatid na 500 minutes, ay it will take the student longer to finish all our tasks. Okay? So, yung length of time na ibinibigay natin bawat guro sa bawat uh, sa, na, bilang guro sa bawat estudyante para ma-accomplish yung isang task we have to be very careful with that so what do i suggest ano yung math measurement yan science tsaka TLE pwedeng mag-integrate sa isang activity TLE cooking for example measurement math Heat science, mixing ng eh, yung procedure, TLE po. So, ito po yung isang mga bagay na isang sa mga bagay na dapat nating isipin bilang guru na dapat nagi integrate tayo sa iba't ibang subject. Kasi po yung ating concept na tinuturo sa kanila ay uh, ina apply po in real life. Sa ngayon po mas magandang magturo ng life skills. Ano po ba yung mga life skills na yan? Dati po meron kaming practical arts ang tapo sa subject ano? Ano po 'yon? Magkarpintero, magkumpone ng bumbilya, maggumawa ng lampshade. 'Yun po sa mga lalaki. Sa mga babae po ano? O uh, yung magtahe. Okay? Manahe, magluto. Ito din po yung mga subject na 'yon. These are life skills. So, this lessons that we have should be observed by the students when we when they do uh, household chores. Ano po? So, we have to be, we have to plan our lessons carefully together with other subject para less po ang burden sa estudyante, less burden sa parents, at less headache po sa atin. Kasi po, pag less headache sa atin, ang parent po mas masisiyahan. Ang magulang po ang bibigyan natin ng task to supervise their kids if they are doing their assignment. They have to do it as parents, you know? Our, our capacity to remind them is very limited. Okay? So, ito po yung ibig kong sabihin ng sa estudyante. Okay po? So, just make sure to post your questions if you have any or any reaction po, no? Okay. So, let's proceed now with uh, the next one. Ito po yung teacher tips for virtual uh, classroom. Ano pong sinasabi dito? Ang sinasabi lang po dito, kapag uh, kapag uh, preschool to grade 5, ang dapat pong synchronous class is from 5 to 15 minutes only. 
Okay? Tapos, every other day. Every other day po, hindi pwedeng every day. At least once a week. Bakit at least once a week at hindi pwedeng every day? Minimum of one, maximum of three. Okay? Depende po yan sa scheduling ng school, sa management, ng, sa, sa school admin. Bakit po? Para there is a certain normalcy with, for the student na ay okay, may klase ako ngayon, papasok pa ako. Take note po, we are building routines. But this routine is difficult to do if they are at home. So, the normal face-to-face, -face, the, normal, the normal class encounter should be there, present po dapat. Para andun pa rin yung engagement natin sa students at normal pa rin po yung, yung, yung uh, pakikisalamuha ng estudyante sa ibang estudyante, nandun pa rin po yung interaction nila with their classmates. So, we have to provide them venue. But for the lower kids, uh, for the lower grades, kinder to grade 5, it should be 5 to 15 minutes max per class encounter, synchronous encounter, and then every other day or maximum of three times in a week or at least once a week. For the grades, um, for grade six or grade six, uh, grade five to eight, it can be longer. It can be 15 to 20 minutes, okay? It can be every day or every other day. So minimum of two, maximum of three. Yan po. For the, the junior and senior high school grades nine to 12, it can be 25 to 30 minutes. It can be every day or every other day. Okay? Minimum of two, maximum of five. Bakit po? Ano pong gagawin dito? But ang konti naman? Siguro po masasabi nyo, no? 30 minutes, anong matatapos ko nyo? Magdi-discuss ako, ubos na yan, no? Hindi po tayo magdi-discuss doon sa 30 minutes or sa 20 minutes or sa 15 minutes na yon. Ang gagawin lang po natin, kumustahan you will tell them, uh, okay, class, this is what I have prepared for you. So you have to accomplish this. The deadline for this is this and that. So sasabihin nyo lang po, hindi po kayo magtuturo. Okay? Kasi po, dapat ngayon, uh, self-directed ang ating mga estudyante. When you say self-directed, there is a guide for them to follow. Okay? Kaya po yung 15 to 20 minutes o yung 30 minutes natin, yun po ay para magkaroon lang ng normalcy doon sa class encounter. Iyon po yun. Okay? Kaya, medyo demanding po ngayon ng distance education or distance learning because you have to carefully plan ano po yung ating topic, ano ba yung objective na yung linggong ito, ano ba yung, ano yung discussion, saan na mangyayaring discussion. You will supply them with PDF files or reading materials or video that will supplement the reading materials and then you will plan also the activity, how they can do it, Okay, yung activities, and then how can they submit it? So, it must be given, they have to be given one week time para po ma-accomplish yung activity. Okay? Halimbawa po, medyo mahirap. Medyo malaki yung pinapagawa nyo. More than 15 minutes. Medyo mahihirapan po. Kailangan po natin i-cut yan. I-divide po natin yan. So, yung process po ngayon ay very important. Hindi lang po yung output ng estudyante. The process is more important than the output now. Okay? So, we have to integrate para po mas madali yung activity na magagawa natin. Okay? So, this is according to study po. Ano? Okay po ba? Kaya po po. Let's continue. So, tips for teachers. Okay? As teachers, we should approach distance education and the teaching process with empathy and care for the students. Why? Because they the students miss their classmates. So we have to uh, deal with our students with care, with empathy for them. Because we don't know what is their condition at home. Minsan po, masaya ang bata pumasok sa eskwelahan dahil makikita niya si teacher. Makikita po niya yung mga classmates niya, yung mga kaibigan niya. Pero ngayon po, Nasa bahay na lang sila. Kaya when we do distance education, it's it should be a light. It's they should we should have to excite our students to meet us during synchronous class. Okay po? Also, take proactive steps to adapt to the new environment by taking advantage of both offline and online learning opportunities. Okay po? So Hindi lang po dapat puro online. Ang pagluluto naman po ay offline, ano? 
Huwag po tayo magpapagawa na magpapagawa sa estudyante na puro online. Kaya lang po tayo nag-online para po makapag-communicate sa kanila. But, let's say, so Sir Edward is a music teacher, no? Hindi naman pwedeng uh, mag-re-recorder siya electronic. Hindi, kasi dapat matutunan niya yung pag-control ng musical instrument. Okay? Or piano. Pwede naman digital, pero they should learn pa rin how to which key to press, okay? Now, as teachers, there are uh, uh, a lot of open educational resource that we can uh, use, utilize, to use in our classroom, okay? Para hindi naman po tayo lahat na prepare okay? Another thing is, ayan po, yung sasabi ko na, we have to integrate the OER or the Open Educational Resource para po hindi kayo lahat ang magpe-prepare. Mahirap po yun. Marami na pong challenges para sa ating mga guro kung tayo po magpe-prepare ng video, ng PDF files, ng lahat ng resources natin. Pero meron po mga uh, re open educational resource like Khan Academy, K-H-A-N, academy.com for math teachers, for science teachers, uh, for math, meron po silang complete curriculum. Ano? Yan, yan po. So you can use that. So, open educational resources. So, it will help you to focus on the interaction and the support for students. Yan po yung pinakamalagang magawa natin ngayon. Hindi lang po yung concept na ma maibigay po natin yung ating content, kundi po yung pakiki... Our relationship with our students is more than important than our content. Okay? So, we have to remember that. And then, we have to consider student, ito po, sinabi ko na po ito kanya, student workload while developing activities and graded assignments. Nasabi ko na po yan, no? So, we have to integrate with other subjects so it will be easier for students and for us. Okay? Make sure that all staff are available at designated times for students to reach them via telephone or social media. Ano pong ibig sabihin ito? <clears throat> Sa, sa isang load po ng teacher ngayon, meron po tayong asynchronous class dapat. Ay, sorry, synchronous class. Okay? To meet them uh, real time or live. Aside from that, meron po tayo dapat uh, every week na time for consultation. So, meron tayo ibubroadcast. I mean, uh, we have to let our students know that every, let's say, ako po ay isang teacher, no? Uh, every MWF, from 10.30 to 11 o'clock, I am available for you to talk to me. Anyone can talk to me, any any students, for consultation. Kasi hindi naman po mangyayari dun sa synchronous class natin. I-entertain nyo lahat ng questions na inquiries, ano? So, dun, kasi hindi, hindi nga po enough yung time na 30 minutes. We have the <clears throat> time for consultation. So, it should be a regular thing every week. So, that will be part of the load of the teacher. Okay? Aside from the uh, consultation period of students to with the uh, of students to their teachers, we need to have a time then for consultation with parents. Uh, with time with parents, ibig sabihin kumustahan yung PTC natin hindi siya periodically. It should happen every week then. Why? Because again, we are giving them a part of our job. So we should provide them time to talk to us. Bukod po sa si student nagko-consult sa atin, si parent din po nagko-consult sa atin. So part po yan na magiging schedule ng mga guro. Okay? So it may be a phone or a social media or a, a, a Google Meet. So yan po. If you're using G Suite for Education, meron pong Google Calendar wherein you can plot the uh, appointment slot. So, madali na po yun. I-click lang po yung calendar, ipopost lang po yan sa website ng school para makausap si teacher. So, the school should provide a venue for the parents to see the schedule of the, of the, the availability of the teachers for consultation. So, marami pong dinidemand sa atin ngayon. Ano? Pero, tandaan niyo po, ang mga magulang ay pinapasahan natin ng trabaho natin bilang guro. Okay? So, na na, kung, na, kung naaalala nyo pa po, kung naaalala nyo pa po, ang uh, 
Kung naalala niyo pa po, ang sinabi ko po nung last meeting, uh, ang parent po ang unang guro ng ating mga estudyante. So hindi po pwede na hindi po natin sila bibigyan ng chance na makipag-usap sa atin. Mahalaga po na open tayo dyan. Okay? Now, ensure that all students' queries are responded to within a specified time. So we will open a schedule for the students to consult us. So dapat po, masagot natin yung inquiries nila. Hindi po natin sila pwedeng bitinin. Tandaan nyo po, ang i-consult nila sa atin ay yung about our lesson. So we should be able to entertain, answer all their inquiries. Okay po? And then, <clears throat> ayan po, no? Provide a general space for frequently asked questions. Siyempre po, ang mga estudyante minsan hindi nakikinig, ano? So, dapat po, kung nanonotice yung marami ng nagtatanong, gagawin nyo pong, kung gumagamit po kayo ng Google Sites or Google Classroom, meron na po kayong frequently asked questions section. Para kapag ang tinatanong po sa inyo ng estudyante ay, Teacher, teacher, paano po yung gagawin namin sa activity? Okay, ganito, Gary, you can go back to the classroom and read the, read the procedure. Hindi nyo sasagutin kasi pag sasagutin nyo, kahit nakapost na doon, mawiwili pa yung mga estudyante. So, sinasabi nga po natin, distance learning is self-directed. So, dapat po, bibigyan natin sila, okay, you read the instruction. Understand. If you don't understand, okay, go back and ask me again. What are the things that you need to be clarified? Hindi po yung i-spoon feed, is, laging pong spoon feeding tayo nangyayari, no? Kaya tayo po ang mapapagod din. So, dapat po, hindi ganun. Okay? Next. Uh, work in teams and develop communities to, of practices to avoid duplication of effort, share best practices, leverage lessons learned. So, ayun nga po, no? You communicate with other teachers so you can work on a particular activity para integrated na yung activity na yun. So, marami ng subject yung out, isang output, marami ng subject ang nagbe-benefit. And then, uh, we talk to other teachers then because we want to know how do you do, uh, parang, yung mga best, sharing of best practices po, no? Para ma-improve po natin yung ating implementation ng distance learning. Okay po? So, dyan po nag end ang aking uh, slide presentation. I think this is now the time for Q&A. po. So, for those who are interested to acquire the, the G Suite for Education, which is given by Google for free, just email education at qsr.com.ph. If I have tutorial videos, nandiyan po yan sa YouTube channel ko. And if for, for training po, you can email me at edtechandbeyond at gmail.com. So, Miss Reggie, time now for yes. Q&A. Yes, thank you very much, Sir Gary. Your presentation has been very helpful and very practical. Practical, no? So talagang ang daming inputs na nakuha ng ating mga educators. And and actually, when we saw your setup, it was so very impressive. Talagang ganito pala na ang teacher ngayon. This is how the teachers should be like, no? Para na silang um, computer technologists as oh, well. Oh, yun yung talent <laughs> talaga sa mga guru ngayon kasi hindi na, alam ba, Filipino teacher or social studies teacher, hindi, hindi naman sila, ito yung mga hindi talaga techie, ano? Or, hindi naman, I'm not generalizing, but hindi ko kailangan ng technology noon. Bakit ngayon? Kailangan ko malaman lahat ng ito. Pero iyon po yung uh, iyon po yung pangangailangan natin ngayon bilang guro. Matutunan po lahat ng paggamit ng equipment. Kung dati po may nagsaset up sa classroom natin para mag-project, ngayon po tayo mismo yun. Ano? <laughs> Oo, yun pa yung, yun pa yung uh, another challenge, di ba? Just to set it up. So maybe before we get to start with the, with the question and answer, let's just go through the reminders um, for us to be able to, uh, to facilitate our question and answer portion. So um, first for your questions, just type them anytime in the Q&A box. Uh, we will accommodate as many questions as time permits. To ask a question in person, you will have to either raise your hand or indicate in, in the chat box that you would like to answer the question in person. And then uh, we will acknowledge you and accept. Uh, and then please, when we acknowledge you, please accept the invite and unmute your microphone and turn on your camera. 
And then, um, of course, the microphones will remain on mute and video cameras turned off until you're given the opportunity to ask questions. So there, so madami tayo dito mga questions, may tublets. Um, go through the question and answer box. So I just, uh, for those um, who are interested no, with the presentation of Sir Gary, uh, handouts will be given out. So it's there in the handouts section as well. So you can download it anytime. So I'm sure, sir, madami magda-download. And this is a very big help for everybody. Po. It's yeah. based on research, po. it's not based on my thoughts. Lang, no? It's based on research by um, Commonwealth of Learning. They conducted research last uh, March 2020. Yeah, yeah. Very, very timely, sir. And I'm sure a lot a lot of our educators today have, have learned a lot. So at the maritime question from Ms. Oliver, uh, Mr. Oliver Meneses, sir, how about for special ed students or those with special needs, how can we assist them with their learning needs via online or distance learning? Um, okay, iba iba po kasi yung special needs na na. For example, po, may in Google Slide, let's say may problem sa hearing, ano? May problem po sa hearing. When you're talking, if you use Google Slide and turn on the the closed captioning all the words that you're saying will be typed for you. Pero English lang po yon. So kung Filipino po ang ating subject, medyo challenge po yan. So we will be, we need to provide more reading materials for them. Lahat po ng ating discussion nandun. Yun po ay para sa mga merong hearing problem. Now, um, hindi ko po alam kung ano po yung ibang special needs. I am uh, medyo, yan po mga mas challenging po yan. Hindi po ako uh, special ed. But there are technologies that we can utilize. With, uh, with Google Docs, for example, um, you, can, you can easily dictate what you want to say, uh, what you want to type, no? So it's the same concept being used in Google Slide para po dun sa mga may hearing problem. For special ed, ayan po, I need to know specific because uh, hindi po ako special ed, ano po, ayan, mga, may mga special needs. Siguro, I can give advice, but not really an expert advice. So there, we have another question here from um, Vivian David. Why is it not advisable to have everyday synchronous meets for K-5, even for just 15 minutes? You said, maximum, you said earlier, maximum three three times a week, and at least okay. once a week. Bakit po hindi advisable? Kasi po, lalo na po for the lower grades, what we want to what we want to develop for these kids is their motor skills, their social skills, kaya po, maximum lang po of, uh, of three times a week. Kasi po, they have different needs. They need to develop their motor skills, their sensory skills. If we go online all the time, we're not helping them. Ang kailangan po mabuild nila yung muscles nila. Kailangan po mabuild nila yung katawan nila, no? yung balance nila. So, hindi po advisable na online every day. Kasi po, bukod po dun sa klase natin, for sure, meron yan sa bahay na oras na nagsa-cellphone lang, which is not healthy anymore. Kasi they will be spending so much time in front of the screen. Meron pong advice um, length of time for every for kids especially for screen time maximum of 2 hours po yung 2 hours po na yon ay magkakasama po lahat paggamit ng cellphone paglagay uh, pag pamanonood ng ng movie or pag uh, in front of the TV tapos isasama po po ba natin yung synchronous class natin hindi na po hindi na po healthy yan po kaya po may limitation tayo with regard to screen time So, um, so we have to be conscious of that as well, no? So, ang daming things that we have to consider. Okay. We have, uh, kasi, yeah, because kasi syempre, when they're at home already, you also do not any more control ilan nga yung screen time hours nila on the play side or the leisure side or the video gaming side. So, and then, ito pa, the screen time and even the classes. Yeah, we have a oh, question here for 
from Miss Ever Everly Tida Jimenez. Sabi niya, is it advisable for them to watch together a video from the a PowerPoint presentation or just give them the URL link for them to watch on their own during their asynchronous activity? So example, assign for them to watch the video then discuss in class given the shortened synchronous schedule. Um, ano po yan? Kung asynchronous po, talaga hindi sabay-sabay, ano? Kasi kanya-kanya na po yung panonood kung asynchronous. Ngayon, kung synchronous class po, and then we have limited time, let's say 15 minutes, make sure that the video that you're going to watch is for around 5 minutes. Kasi more than 5 minutes, attention span ng studyante, may kli. Now, take note, let's say you have 15 minutes, you have 5 minutes to watch. You need to have uh, at least conversation, hindi yung papanood mo lang, and then answer, no? Hindi na. You need to have at least short discussion. So it is also advisable to have, at the same time, we will watch during synchronous time, during the 15 to 20 minutes. But a lot time for discussion. Hindi po pwedeng papapanood lang natin. Maganda po yung sabay-sabay tayong manonood. Maganda po yun. But take note that you need to, to have time for discussion, for exchange of insight, kasi ito na po yung bonding with their classmates. Mahalaga po kasi ngayon, you are building relationship with everyone. Ayan po. Virtual, virtual, ano pa, di ba? I mean, you know, it's virtual social interaction pa yung yes. nangyayari because everything has to go using the oh, internet and going to online. So yeah, it's going to be a different dynamic altogether. Yeah. And then sir, uh, my question tayo from Arlene in for Coronado. I, uh, sir, I would like to know your reference on the pyramid showing screen time or synchronous time app for each age, age group. Do we have um, a... Uh -huh. Yung triangle po, no? yung pyramid. And dun po yung reference ko sa baba. You download po the uh -huh. MySide deck and dun po yung reference. Okay, good. May nagtatanong dito, sir. I'm, sabi ko na sa iyo, um, um, a lot were impressed with your um, setup. Paano daw ang setup ng extended camera and paano magdagdag ng extended camera? Can it be, pwede bang ano yan, YouTube tutorial? Ah, okay. Oo nga, ang plano ko po nun, gumawa na ng YouTube tutorial about this kasi marami nga po nagtatanong. Sige po, I'll find time kasi po, ang dami pong trainings ngayon. But let me sh Siguro I can share my screen sandali, ano? Yes, please. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Okay. Actually, ako lang yung nagdagdag ng YouTube tutorial. So I think <laughs> right now, they would like to really see how it how it's it's actually set up. So I have uh, an external camera connected to my laptop. Okay? So let's see. Ayan po, no? Tatanggalin ko na po siya sa tripod. So magiging shaky lang po ng konti. So, so the, okay, um, this wire, this wire here is connected to the camera that I am holding now, yung nagpa-flash po ng video na to. So, ganun lang po, i-connect nyo lang siya, and then sa mga software nyo pong gagamitin, katulad po ng ginagamit ko yun, meron pong button to share your extent, your window, or share your screen, kahit ano pong mga, uh, recording yan, dapat po merong option to show your other camera. So, ayun po, uh, meron lang pong switch. So, depende po yan sa software na gagamitin nyo. For example, if you're using Google Meet, you have the option to uh, show your other tab or your other window para makikita nyo dun sa screen, sa TV, yung mga estudyante. Tapos, dito naman yung slide deck niyo. So, depende po yan sa software. But, it is very, uh, it's advisable that you have an extended camera. Yun lang po. Uh, medyo mahirap po explain dahil depende po sa software na gagamitin natin. Okay po? Yan. So, balik ko na po siya dito. Sige okay. po, miss. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yan. So, nakita na natin. And I'm sure set up na kailangan matutunan ng isang ordinaryong teacher, ano? Na, pa, dati yung technician, ngayon wala na yung technician. So, kailangan po matutunan natin. So, maybe we could, yeah, maganda nga sir, siguro we could have a YouTube tutorial for that one. 
dun sa inyo at sa inyong YouTube channel. Opo. Meron po dito, may babasahin lang po. What kind of external camera do you use? What I'm using po is Logitech Pro. Uh, mga, ang, kung tatanungin niyo po kung magkano ang cost niyan, less than 3,000 po. Uh, kasi po, high resolution po yan. Automatic yung subject na focus niya. Meron po siyang built-in microphone. Tapos meron po siyang uh, uh, yung lighting po niya. So, maganda po yung audio built-in na po sa camera. Kaya medyo mahal po. <laughs> yun po. So, yun. Baka pwede naman ipa inverse na. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> yun yung isang support na dapat. Baka po magalit sa yung mga skwela, no? So, maybe we can extend assistance to teachers. Kasi po, uh, they need this for their, ano, the way, yung sa teaching ko na nila ngayon. So, maybe we can extend po, no? Pati nga po yung internet connection, kung wala, ano po yung pwede natin maitulong sa mga guro. Ayan po. Correct. So, yan. So, that has to be um, considered, no? By by the schools as well. Okay. Sir, meron itong question. Um, may noise cancellation po ba ang Google Classroom when we use Google Meet? Uh, meron, pong, uh, meron pong noise cancellation si Google Meet. Uh, Iniro-roll out na po siya. So, hindi ko lang po alam kung kailan siya magiging active na, but very soon po, meron pong noise cancellation. This is only available for G Suite for Education accounts. Hindi po available yan sa free accounts. My question is Sister Grace Bueno. Um, sir, I'm not sure what, what OER means. Would you like, uh, would, would you like to ask if there is an available OER? for Christian living? Would... Um, yun po ang challenge sa uh, Christian living or sa values. Wala pa po akong nakikitang OER for, for, for that subject or for values formation or Christian living. OER, sir, is? Open educational resource po. Okay. I think Celestiana has this one po, no? Yung, uh, tama po ba? Meron po yata ang Celestiana, no? Mga videos for Christian living. Yes, uh, sister, we have now ongoing yung ating Christ Evangelization Faith Series. So, um, that can be uh, used no, for um, um, CLE classes for, for th this school year, which we are implementing the distance learning. So, this could be a big help no, for, for our um, for our Catholic schools. So let's see. Uh, you could check our website for the schedule for this one. Thank you. Um, from Miss Arlene, again, uh, sir, you partly covered for the reference of the pyramid. Can you please add on? So we all answered this already, no? So this, they all, in the handout, you'll be able to see the source. We're releasing that. You can download the handouts anytime. It's there already in the handout section. Is a school with K to six program only eligible for G Suite for Education? Um, okay, for to avail of the free G Suite for Education account, dapat ang one of the requirement lang po ay uh, one of the requirement is you have a domain name. Second, you need to re be registered sa DepEd. Meron po kayong uh, school number parang ganon po. Yung uh, DepEd accredited po dapat kayo. So all you need to do is submit the requirements po. So, hindi naman po kailangan na hanggang high school, no? Basta may permit po from DepEd, you will be granted po. As long as the uh, requirements are complete. Okay, thank you. So, um, ito, sir, my question dito, which I think also is a very common situation um, for a number of teachers, no? So they plan to teach at home without going to school, but they only have a laptop. And of course, the rest that you have um, shown earlier, it's not available. No, They don't have it at the moment. So uh, can they just connect with their laptop? Um, from their neighbor's PLDT internet. Pa, no? So paano daw makatipid? No? Maybe, maybe you could discuss, sir, what could be the basic, basically like, bare very basic for them to be able to teach online. Okay po. Um, 
Papa, meron pong ganong scenario kasi yung binigay ko po kayo, very ideal ano, yung merong synchronous. Now, let's say there are challenges like hindi posible dahil prepaid lang at hindi ganun kalaki ang income dahil uh, ayun na, yun, yun lang yung kaya nila. So, if you make use of G Suite for Education, you can um, magiging disiplinado po dapat ngayon ng mga estudyante. So, ang mangyayari po, yung, if we will utilize Google Classroom, you upload all the resources there. Yung mga PDF files, reading materials, yung mga questionnaire, yung assessment. And then periodically, let's say your class is every Monday, every, mon uh, every Sunday you upload. So every Monday, the students will visit your Google Classroom. Okay? And then the task will, should be accomplished within the week. Ibig sabihin, Monday, nakuha ni estudyante, or Monday, dinownload niya, no? Or Tuesday, dinownload niya, or Wednesday, dinownload niya. So ibig sabihin, Monday mo binigay, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, meron siyang time to go online and download the content. But if you if they download it on a Friday, it means they only have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to accomplish the task. Kasi by Monday, it has to be submitted. So, mm. magiging, uh, meron pong, ano, may discipline na dapat si estudyante na, okay, I, on, on, for this particular subject, Monday siya nagpo-post, Ida download ko siya ng Monday, so I can work on it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Bahala na po siya mag-manage ng time niya. Kasi yung ibang subject naman po, Tuesday naman po mag upload So, ibig sabihin, Wednesday, Thursday, hindi po dapat lahat kayong subject sabay-sabay ng Monday. Kasi po, syempre, tutulungan natin yung estudyante. Okay, since nauna to, unahin mo na. Parang, we observe the first in, first out, No? Kasi pag sabay-sabay po yan, hindi po natin tinutulungan yung estudyante na, okay, since na ako na to, unang mo nang gawin to. Okay, yung iba naman sa Tuesday. O sa Tuesday nila na-download, o pagtapos ka na na ng ma for Monday subject, o di sige, go ahead, download the Tuesday subject, work on it. Or it can be MWF. So, ah, para po maturuan natin ng disiplina ang estudyante. Kasi po pag sabay-sabay tayo, Ida-download po na niya, no? hindi na niya alam kung uunahin niya sa sobrang dami po nang pwede niyang unahin. Ngayon po, <clears throat> kaya po ganun yung timing din para pag Monday din download, okay, dapat by Monday or Sunday or before Monday or Monday, may upload ko naman. So, para ang connection lang niya sa internet, on a download, on a, on a download time lang, tapos, halimbawa, gusto niyang gawin man, uh, Monday, ano? Monday niya dinownload, uh, din tapos yung Tuesday, dinownload din niya ng Tuesday. So, Wednesday, Thursday, gagawin na niya. Diba? Tapos yung Wednesday, Thursday, ida-download din niya. So, hanggang sa ma-download niya yung marami, by Monday, sabay-sabay niyang i-upload ngayon. So, magko-connect lang siya on a specific time, pero yung submission niya, isahan or pwedeng dalawang batch din kung nagtitipid tayo sa internet, if we have limited internet resources. So, ito po yung, ano na, disiplina natin, diskalte sa pagmamanage ng time. So, hindi naman po kasi kailangan naka-online tayo lagi. And it's not healthy all the time na online tayo. Yun po. So, tuturuan so, din po natin, Jante. So, si teacher, ganun din, sir. Oh, so, po. Ganun din. Nakaschedule siya para hindi, hindi siya all the time that they would need an internet connection. Opo, yes, correct. Okay, so it's a matter of really planning as well, no? Scheduling, planning. Kaya nga po, merong to-do list tayo dapat. Visually, post nyo yan sa pader, no? Na lagi nyo madadaanan para, oops, okay, accomplish ko na, check, or i-cross out nyo na. Para visually, you're also guided. So, yan. So, for teachers and students po yan. So, sir, ganun, uh, going back dun sa setup, kung wala daw ganun na camera like you have, can they use the cell phone? Ay, opo. Pwede naman po. Make use of the cell phone. Kasi yung mga smartphones naman natin, maganda yung resolution yan. So, pwedeng-pwede po yun. Ibig sabihin, nakakonect sa internet lang ang inyong laptop, nakakonect din sa internet ang inyong cell phone. So, ang, ang ano naman po nun, maghahati po yung laptop nyo at saka yung inyong cell phone sa pag-connect sa internet. So, kung naka 
external camera lang kayo nakakonek sa laptop nyo, isa lang po ang nakakonek sa internet. Yun po yung mga pros and cons nun. Pwede rin po ang cellphone camera. Yes. Yan, sir. So, tinatarin dito, um, can we use pen tablet in real-time teaching, synchronous? Will the students be able to see whatever I will solve right on the tablet if the platform is Google Meet or Zoom? Opo. Parang yung question po yun ni Sir, uh, uh, ano kanina, ni Sir Edward, ano? So, pwede po. Basta ang mahalaga po, may connector kayo. Meron po kayong connector para po sa laptop. Para hindi na kayo gagamit ng whiteboard, meron na kayong electronic naman sa iPad na pwede po yun. Basta may connector po kayo for for the device. Ayan po. Pwedeng pwede Tapos, po Tapos sir, um, ano, what do you recommend na specs ng laptop? Uh, at least po, i3. <laughs> I3. At least I Opo. Kasi po, uh, magsasabay-sabay po yan. Take note po, mag meron pong time na magsisynchronous class kayo. Ibig sabihin, mapaprocess niya. Kung meron po kayong 20 students, 20 videos po ang ipaprocess niya. So, kaya po ng I3 yun. Ayun po. Um, at least I3. Tapos, ang advice ko po, no, huwag po kayo masyado mag-open ng maraming windows para it will lessen the consumption of the memory of the computer. So, kapag klase nyo, ang i-open nyo lang yung Google Meet niyo o yung Google Slide niyo, yung essential lang for you to teach. Kasi when you open other apps na hindi naman needed, it will consume the, yung memory. Yan po. It will affect the performance of your computer. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, um, again, going back sa setup, sir, anong dynamic daw po ninyo uh, Anong camera yung ginamit nyo ngayon na makikita po sa FaceTime? Aside po doon sa nakakonect sa Mac. Ah, um, yung ginagamit ulit po, Miss. Kasi may, I have the built-in camera from my laptop and then an external camera. So yung so, FaceTime ko po, yung sa laptop. Sa laptop, tapos yes. Tapos po, yung external camera. Hmm. External camera, sir, Yan is... Po. It's just... My external camera uh, is Logitech Pro. <laughs> Sana binabayarin lang ako for the advertisement. Logitech Pro. Para oh, po ah, maganda yung resolution. Eh, ano? Na-plugging. Yan. Hindi, okay na. Oh, okay, kasi yung ito yung naman po ay na, here, no? na... Po? You mentioned earlier um, how yung, much it yung, is, yung, sir. Opo. Pero hindi ko po siya binili. <laughs> okay. Ah. Hinig lang ko lang po ang price niya. Hindi ko po siya binili kasi regalo po sa akin yan ni Google. Uh, since I conduct uh, web, uh, online webinars din po. So they provided us with with good camera and a lapel. Kaya po hindi ako naka-earphone because I have this. So para po mas convenient daw sa amin. <laughs> Very po. good. Yan. Thank you, Google. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here, here, no? So we still have uh, some more questions. Um, so if they are not el if they are not DepEd registered, will they be still be eligible to get a, a? Can they still subscribe to G Suite for Education? And po, one of the main requirements po is they have to be uh, DepEd accredited po. Ayun po. So, let's say hindi po sila debt and accredited. Ano? Meron din po mga nagtatanong ng ganyan. You can make use naman po of the Gmail, the personal account. Ang difference po nun, wala lang kayong control sa email accounts ng mga estudyante. You cannot secure their accounts. Yun po. Um, it means, kung wala, tayong, kung wala tayong control sa email ng accounts ng estudyante natin, they can go subscribe and visit any site. Mm -hmm. Compared to a education account, now you have control. You can restrict where they can visit. Take note, we mm -hmm. are teachers and we are teaching them na we need to have control. Kaya po, it is suggested if you have, uh, if you're a formal school, you avail of the G Suite for Education, it is for free. Pero nga po, kung hindi tayo registered ng DepEd, hindi po tayo makaka-avail. Ang paraan lang po, you use the personal account but you have no control over the accounts of the students. 
Yun lang po yung downside. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's better to get as well a, a, a certificate no, from DepEd. And then yes. we have another question. I think this was discussed during our last uh, session, the first session that we had, but I think okay. it's good to review. We have here, can you explain the advantages of having an open LMS, open source LMS? Ah, okay. Kasi po, ay, sorry, open? Open source uh, learning management system, LMS. So ah, just okay. like the Google Classroom. With with the uh, with the Google Classroom po kasi, you can integrate anything. You can integrate a lot. Actually, marami po. Wala pong, ang limitation lang naman po ng LMS ng Google or yung Google Classroom is the creativity of the teacher. Now, let's say you have, uh, compared to other LMS, so para po yung meron ng, uh, meron ng naka-structure na po siya, no? So you are limited with how they design the LMS. Compared to Google Classroom, you can do whatever you want. As an educational system or a teacher, you can put anything you want. You're not limited to how the design, the, how the LMS was designed by the programmers. Yun po yung main difference niya. And Google Classroom po, even though you have an existing LMS na, you can also integrate that with, uh, with Google Classroom. Ganun po ka-flexible sa G Suite for Education. Okay. So yun nga, we notice nga some schools that they have their own LMS, but still, they have, uh, they still use Google Classroom, no? So it can, pwede siya, pwede siyang sabay. Pwede po siyang integrate. Yes, and then we have here question, paano kaya yung assessment daw, no? With this kind of a setup that we have, how do we handle now assessment ng mga bata, quizzes, Oh, pa paano yung, uh, how do integrate um, With the assessment po kasi, kasi ang concern po dyan ni teacher, marami na pong beses ko na-encounter ito yung question na to, na paano yun? They can, they can cheat, you know? They can cheat. So it means, um, yes, it is possible because we have, we don't see them. Ano po yung paraan para maging authentic yung assessment natin? It will be more tasking for teachers, but it is authentic, you know. One, you can use video recording. For example, um, practical, you know, let's say it's English, yung language, no? Proper pronunciation, paano nyo magagawa yun? So, ibig sabihin, sa, kung, kung sa klase po yan, isa-isa yung tinatawag yung estudyante. Tapos pag re yun, no? So, ngayon, paano siya? It also, it can also be done using an extension called Screencastify. So, makikita nyo yung estudyante habang nagsasalita siya and it is recorded, what they need to submit is the URL. Because if you use Screencastify, uh, a link will be provided after recording, yun po yung ipapasa ng estudyante. So, kahit po hindi na face-to-face, real-time yung assessment ng reading or uh, let's say yung sa PE, yung magsasayaw, magpa-follow ng steps, they can record themselves and then submit it. That's authentic. They cannot mm. cheat. That is the method. Now, eh, halimbawa, um, multiple choice, no? Yun yung hindi natin masusure kasi uh, they, they can use their mobile phones while in front of the computer and then talk, chat, or text to each, with each other. Medyo mahirap po yun. So, ano pong solution doon? Instead of giving um, objective type question, give them an open-ended question. Kasi makikita nyo naman yung open-ended, pare-pareho ng sagot, sino una nagpasa? Kasi po, mm. sa Google, may timestamp. Ano? So yung uh -huh. timestamp, kailan nila sinabmit yan. So kung nag-usap man po sila, kung sino yung unang nagpasa, siya ang una nyo pong mabibigyan ng higher points. Okay, okay. po? So that's, yun po yung so, uh, mechanics natin. <laughs> it must be question. very challenging at this time. So, parang puro mga, ano tawag, how do you call that? Yung puro application more or less, no? They, they would be graded more more or less the, on the application of what they have learned um, okay. during the online classes. Uh -huh. So, sir, uh, I think we've finished. Uh, and then, pa, one last question. Regarding sa technical, how do you do lighting daw? How do we do lighting for... 
ganyan okay. clap. Light, lighting po ano? Hindi po ang yeah. lighting is basically wag po tayong direct sunlight ano. Ayun. So kung makikita niyo po sige, i-turn ko po no. Nandito po yung bintana namin. Ayun po sa labas po 'yan. Kaya diyan po nanggagaling yung natural light. And yung sa taas ko po yung bulb yung sa taas, wala pong ilaw 'yan para mas maganda yung dating. Medyo ano, filtered po yung ating light, ano? So yun po yung mga i-consider natin. Saan tayo po pwesto kapag nag-conduct po tayo ng ano, nag-conduct po ay pag nag-set up po tayo ng ating workspace. Yan po. Yeah. So thank you. We learned a lot, sir. So maybe uh, one uh, one last question. Um we have time for one more question. Um for companies or for example, they can they um do we recommend teachers now like for example, come up with their own um, um, lecture series and then have it posted on YouTube so that the 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 students would be able to access it anytime. Parang ganyan. Ako, um, uh, ako po, I suggest that one. Kasi pwede po tayong makahanap ng mga OER pero wala pong connect yung estudyante natin doon. But If we will create our own, we have more connection para ay si teacher yung kausap, ang pinapakinggan niya. But it also entails more time for us to prepare the videos. So, yun po, mas maganda po kung tayo yung pinapakinggan ng estudyante natin. Lalo na po, hindi naman po lahat makakapag-synchronous class. What, one way for us to connect with our students is to record our class. So, kung kaya niyo pong mag-synchronous, uh, What I suggest is that you record the class. So, meron siya mga classmate doon. Meron po kasi pagkakataon na uh, okay, meron tayong synchronous class, 9 o'clock to 9:30. Tapos si yung bata 9 ano, 8:55. Anak, anak, tulungan mo nga ako dito. Ganyan ganyan ganyan. So, na, na ano siya, willing naman umattend pero biglang inutusan ni nanay. So, i-record na lang po natin yung ating klase para makikita niya doon kayo at yung mga classmate niya para mas may personal uh, connection with the students. Kasi po, pag ni-record natin, anong po mangyayari? Ipopost na lang po natin sa Google Classroom para doon na lang po siya makikinig. Kasi po, pag ni-record natin yung ating synchronous class, meron pong interaction kayo with your students na nandun sa live event, ano? So, baka po question din kasi ng estudyante, nung, nung nakamiss na student, yung question na ng ibang estudyante. So, yung, uh, yung synchronous class po is advisable na sana nire-record nyo. Advisable din po na sana pag nag-record kayo, may estudyante kayo kasi hindi nyo po alam kung ano ang tanong ng estudyante. Kung makakapture nyo rin po yung tanong ng estudyante, mas maganda po. Okay? Parang po nakaka-relate lahat. Okay, thank you very much, sir. We have learned a lot this afternoon, and I'm sure uh, all our educators who have been uh, have joined us this afternoon are also very much grateful. So, any any last tip now before before we say goodbye? Opo, bago po ako maglast tip ano? Gusto ko lang po matiyas si Edward, si Miss Jody, si Miss Claire, ng pabeta. <laughs> Nandyan daw po pala sila. <laughs> Okay, salamat po sa pakikinig. Namimiss ko na po kayo. <laughs> okay, uh, tips for teachers. Um, uh, challenging po ang pagtuturo sa distance education or distance learning. But take note, uh, matagal na pong worries ng teachers na ang guru daw ay mapapalitan ng technology. No, teachers will not be replaced by technology or with technology. But teachers who knows how to use the technology or these tools may replace other teachers who do not use technology. Okay, so it's time, it's time for us to learn new things, especially for the tenured teachers, it's more challenging. But we have to be uh, relative to the needs or we have to uh, go with the needs of the time. So it's a learning process. Po. We are all lifelong learners. Yun po. So it's time to learn new things. Yun po. Thank you very much, sir, for um for joining us this afternoon. So I'm sure we have, a lot of our educators have learned a lot um, um, from our 
session this afternoon. As as Sir Gary had said, we continue to we continue to learn. We continue to um, to st to study more to be able to be relevant at this time, no? Especially at this time of 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 um, distance learning. So with that, the internet connections. So there. So um, on June 17, we'll have um, learning resources for remote instructions. Um, this is uh, the third episode uh, with uh, UP Open University remote teaching and learning session. So please be there. This is going to be a, a very interesting session as well. And then on June 19, um, this is going to be our uh, episode two for the Chef series. So we're inviting um, all Catholic schools to please join the, to join this um, session for for you to be helped on how we're going to handle pastoral concerns during this time of distance learning. And then on June 26, Friday, we'll also have another session on Google for Education. So there. So um, go, please go to our Facebook page to see the schedules and more seminars, more Chalk Talk Online coming your way. And then also some reminders. Those who have registered for this afternoon session will be receiving um, their certificates in two weeks' time. So please wait for that. And then those who have also registered will be receiving a recording of today's session. So maybe within um, 24 to 48 hours, you'll be able to receive the recording of this afternoon session. And then again, the handouts, you could download the hand handouts there in the handout section. And then, so please accomplish the evaluation survey that will pop out after um, after our session today. So please do accomplish that to help us to be able to come up with better seminar, semi better chalk talk online in the future. So again, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. So we look forward to seeing you again in our next chalk talk online series. Till next time. Thank you. Bye. education through quality textbooks.